Hi folks, Dane here and welcome to my November book haul. Uh, here are some books that I got. We'll start with this one because this one was sent to me. So this is nice, I'm going to read this because this is a nice little handwritten note. This is Chris Harris, the author. It says, Dear Dane, please find my book, Light and Dark 21 Short Stories. Thanks for taking the time to read and review. As a first time published author, I am realising the importance and difficulty in getting a first book out there noticed. So this is 21 Short Stories by uh, Chris C.G. Harris and it's called Light and Dark and I am looking forward to that. Now this next little lot, I just went mental in the charity shops and I bought loads. So we'll just go through all of them. A lot of these are actually, um, some of these I bought basically because they're kind of best sellers. So I want to read them and see what I can learn from them and, and, and emulate, I guess. Um, but these are also, a lot of these books, uh, big booktube books as well. So I kept seeing them and I was like, I'll have to get them. I mean, let's start with the quintessential booktube author. I got uh, Paper Towns by John Green, which I haven't read yet. I've read um, The Fault in Our Stars and Looking for Alaska and I haven't read his new book and I'm just gonna wait until his new books in the charity shops because then I can get it for like this this was a pound so that's happy happy days um, so like bestseller -y thing Dan Brown Inferno so it's number four in the uh, Robert Langdon uh, books apparently it's now a major film as well so they've made like all of the films for all, all of the books I guess and um, I didn't even know that so that's how how interested I am but I mean you know Dan Brown sells a lot of books this one is just for fun. This is how to tell if your cat is planning to kill you, is plotting to kill you. And this is actually, I think it's, it's published. I think the, like the author is technically, or it's published, you know, it's published by The Oatmeal, the website, I believe. So that's cool. And it's all just like little cartoons and stuff. So, okay. Room by Emma Donoghue. This was actually two pounds. The others were all a pound, I think, but it's a lovely little hardback version of it. So, you know, I couldn't couldn't complain. And yeah, everyone talks about it. There's also a movie of it. So I'll probably watch the movie after I read the book. P.D. James, Death Comes to Pemberley, which my uncle has already told me was rubbish and I shouldn't bother reading. So I will read it, but it will take me a while to get there. Uh, this one's pretty cool. This is Gillian, uh, Gillian Flynn, the grown-up, and this is a uh, Edgar Award-winning short story from Gillian Flynn, who's obviously the author of Gone Girl. So, yeah, this I really like. This is Daphne de Maurier, uh, de Maurier. Bleh, I can't say her name. You know, I mean, my cousin Rachel, and this is um, like a really old, obviously really old version. This is first published in 1951. This edition published by the Reprint Society in 1952. So I guess it's a second edition of her book. And I just really like old books like this. Speaking of Daphne du Maurier, I also got uh, Frenchman's Creek and uh, Rebecca, which obviously Rebecca was turned into uh, a movie, I believe, by, uh, uh, I wanted to say Adolf, it's not Adolf, Alfred Hitchcock. And the same, I haven't read any John le Carre before either. And um, this is The Spy Who Came In From The Cold. And this is just a nice little hardback. So I thought, yeah. And finally, Peter James, Perfect People, um, which is not a Roy Grace book, but it is a thriller, so yeah. Okay, so I got this book in the post uh, the other day and I did film myself unwrapping it as I do and then I accidentally deleted the footage because I forgot what it was. So I'm just going to show it to you and this is The Truth About Snails by J.D. Dehart. Now, uh, J.D. Dehart is uh, a reviewer as well so he's reviewed a few of my books and uh, yeah, we just chat on Twitter every now and then and he, he mentioned he'd uh, like to send me a copy of his book so I said yeah why not and as you can see I started reading it today and it's uh, pretty fun so far so a lot of short little poems I'll read one of them to you now we'll flip in at random sidewalk chalk when turning the corner the first image strikes a message in pastel colors the bovine hieroglyphic ready for sacrifice this is the place where the temple was a short poem about going to the restroom is scratched on the pavement a few more feet away and somebody loves somebody for a moment i think about the possibility of rain sweeping in washing the whole page into a gutter the animals running from a flood no ark to give them safe passage to the future 
So thank you, JD Daha. I'm looking forward to finishing this. Okay, so just a quick one today. This is a book that my girlfriend got for me. She's currently sitting next to me. This is The Devious Book for Cats by Fluffy and Bonkers. As you can see, it's like a really nice little, little hardback, which is very exciting. Don't entirely know what it's about, to be honest. It's got these little fish, these little fish skeletons. Very cool. It just looks at the history of cats and talks about here. Say it's time to fight back and regain control of cats rightful place as ruler of the roost once again. Well okie dokie, I have got a little parcel that came in the post and I'm very excited to open it. So let's have a look. <laughs> this actually, I thought it was a book but it's not a book. This is some custom printed Christmas cards with my cat on them. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, it's a little, little Christmas card with the cat on. If I sound ill today, it's because I am ill today. I woke up with a cold and I'm a man, so I think that must mean I'm probably dying. But I did have a lovely little breakaway to Liverpool and Manchester. I bought a bunch of stuff, a bunch of bookish, bookish stuff. Oh, you little dickhead, what was that for? The cat just went, literally just went, like, it was like, no, stop moving your hand. Okay, so when we were in Liverpool, we went to the Beatles story, and this is literally a really, really cheapy plastic bookmark that says the Beatles story. I also got this fridge magnet from Manchester, so this is from Central Manchester Library. Yeah. I picked this up in a charity shop, it was just 99p, and this is just the Ladybird book, The Story of Science. It's actually book one of two. And one of the reasons why I kind of want to read this is it was published in 1973, so I want to see if the story of science has changed since then. A, a lot of these, by the way, are like just booktube classics that everyone's read. This one, for example, this is A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. I'm really looking forward to reading that. Just obviously everyone talks a lot about Patrick Ness and this is kind of his masterpiece as well, even though it wasn't his idea, but that kind of adds an extra element to it, doesn't it? This is actually from before my trip to Liverpool. Uh, I went to meet up with the other people on the shadow panel for the Young Writer of the Year Award and one of them, and I can't remember which one, I'm really sorry, girls. <laughs> it was one of you, maybe, was it Annabelle? I think it might have been Annabelle Gaskell, but anyway, um, I don't want to don't wanna say that for sure in case it wasn't, but this is You Should Have Left by Daniel Kaleman, and this was written in German and has been translated into English, and I don't know if you can see, it's just a really beautiful, it's a tiny, tiny little book. It's just super beautiful, like me. This is another big book tube book. This is Marcus Zusak, The Book Thief. Yeah, I know, I haven't read it yet, I'm really sorry. But I will be reading it soon. And obviously the narrator in this is Death, isn't it? And it's set in Nazi Germany. Which is interesting, because I'm actually currently reading this, uh, Stephen King, Different Seasons. And my bookmark just went, but I didn't lose my page, we're good. And uh, the Nazi Germany is a plot line in one of the novellas in this as well. The cat's now just cleaning himself while sitting on my foot. Also, you know, now that I'm thick, jeez fucking Christ, did you see that? Now that I'm thinking more like a YouTuber, if you would like to see my cat, Biggie Cobain, more in my videos, let me know. I'm sure we can make that happen. There may even be a few poetry things with uh, Biggie coming soon, so keep your eyes peeled for those. While we were in Liverpool, we stopped by the Tate Modern and they had a Roy Lichtenstein uh, exhibition. And you'll probably recognise like the style of um, Lichtenstein's work, probably pronouncing it wrong as well. This is literally just a free pamphlet that we got while we were there. However, <laughs> it's not even illustrated by him because he is dead to be fair, so you can't really fault Roy Lich Lichtenstein, whatever his name is. Anyway, so we went to go and see his art and it was really good. Again, uh, Liverpool video is coming soon, so you can keep your eyes peeled for that and you'll be able to see all that. But while we were there, I picked up these two books and I think they were very reasonably priced as well. I've heard people talk about this author on Booktube all the time and I still don't really know how to pronounce a name, but I'm gonna try and nail it in one. With a cold, of all things. So this is Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. That was pretty close, I think. Whatever. 
you know who I'm talking about, and this is We Should All Be Feminists, which is uh, adapted by a TEDx talk she gave. I'm a white man, so it's, it is hard for me to talk about equality because... I don't know, it's one of those things where actually I feel as though equality is getting a lot of, well it is, it's getting a lot better at the moment, but at the same time, my kind has historically been very privileged. There's another thing I got which is a vintage minis copies of Desire by Haruki Murakami. And look at this, this is just beautiful, it's really thin. I mean, I couldn't not pick it up and it was £3.50 brand new, which is a bargain. A few other bits and bobs from the charity shops. I got Possession by Peter James, just purely because I'm working my way through his back catalogue. Check out Peter James on YouTube, he's a nice guy and he's got some good content. And the fair, rare example of an author whose YouTube channel I actually enjoy watching. <laughs> and it doesn't feel like self-promo. What are you doing now? You're such a... He's, we've been away for two days and so the cat is attention starved. Hey, it's my foot, you shit! Another book, Tubi book, I got uh, The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. Again, big bestseller, very well known. It's a book about books, so it's popular on booktube. We got this, which looks awesome. So this is Murder on the Links by Agatha Christie, but it's actually a Hercule Poirot jigsaw puzzle. It's, well, it describes itself as a Poirot mystery jigsaw puzzle game. Now, it's as you can probably see, it's, si uh, it's uh, sealed. It's not signed, that'd be worth a fucking fortune. Especially because she died before this game was even made. Read the booklet, assemble the puzzle, and work out how Poirot solved the crime. So again, what I was thinking with this is, I might do this with my girlfriend and film it and make a video out of it. So let me know with a comment whether you think I should do that. I haven't actually read Murder on the Links. I've read maybe 20 Agatha Christie books, and this is one that I haven't read. So I shouldn't be spoiled. Although realistically, I always forget who did it and how they did it and why they did it. And I've saved the best till last really. I got these from a little comic shop. And two of these were one pound and then one was three pound fifty. So I think that was pretty reasonable. And these are some of the um, comic editions of American Gods. So they're still made with Neil Gaiman. I mean, he's still kind of in charge of it. And made by Dark Horse Comet Comics. So this is issue number two. This is issue number five. And then this is issue number eight. Biggie, you can you are definitely in shots now, you know. Yes, he doesn't care too much about that. So yeah, I got these three beautiful Neil Gaiman comics and they're all uh, all sealed and whatnot. Won't be sealed for long, because I'm gonna read them. Unfortunately I have issues two, five and eight, so I guess I need to now go and eBay issues one, three, four, six, seven, and nine onwards if nine onwards exists. But anyway, that's my mini haul from when I went away. I'm gonna go and drink my lem sip now. Well, anyway, it's not quite the end of the month, but I'm gonna wrap this up now because I'm not expecting any more books and any that do show up, I will just put in the next video. Also, I wanna get this edited and shared and stuff because I'm really enjoying BookTube at the moment, so thanks for everyone who's subscribed and commented and for anyone who's still watching this video at this point. In my next haul video, I'm possibly gonna change things around a little bit, but also it's mostly gonna be shot here, just so I can use my microphone with decent audio. If you're not sure what I mean, compare my voice towards the end of the video to my voice towards the start of the video. That's the difference between using my built-in mic and my snowball mic. But yeah, so that's about it for the books I've received. I'm gonna be filming a wrap-up of the books I've read this month, and there are also plenty of reviews coming out soon as well. So do keep your eyes peeled. Thanks a lot for all your support, and I will see you at the end of December with my December haul. Bye.